Diego Sanchez. The nightmare is real. It's awful. Everything about the situation is fucking terrible. Um, so <laughs> let's start at the beginning. Uh, Diego was scheduled to fight Donald Cerrone this weekend uh, on the now headline TBD versus TBD fight fight night card and was pulled. We we come to find out it was because the UFC had requested for his medicals or somebody had requested for medicals and then Diego was not answering questions correctly and it was causing some some concern of the UFC brass and they decided to pull him. Uh, and then you've got, of course, Joshua Faber. If you haven't seen the videos of Joshua Faber you know, talking to the commentators about the disrespect and all of that. And then the leaked phone call, right? That was supposed to exonerate all of this between Hunter Campbell and Joshua Faber and Diego. Uh, it's all, it's just, a, it's a nightmare. It literally is the nightmare. Matt, I, I'm not sure. I'm happy that Diego's not fighting because clearly there are things going on, but. Uh, what do you make of this entire clusterfuck? Oh man, it it is definitely that. It is definitely that. Um, I think it's it's unfortunate. First of all, it's very unfortunate for a legend like Diego Sanchez to be having all of these sort of things go on. Um, however, it's probably not the most surprising thing in the world either, considering. Diego's he's always been a little bit out there, right? And I think the most important takeaway from this entire thing is that the longer Diego Sanchez stayed around in the UFC, the more awful his exit was going to be, one way or another. Whether it be a vicious knockout that everybody saw coming or some other unceremonious exit and this is that. A uh, good thing is that he got paid his show and win money for this fight that is no longer taking place. So kudos to him on that. Kudos to the UFC for taking care of a true legend of the company and the promotion. Um, he let this weird character into his life and started controlling everything. And this guy, Joshua Fabia, is ridiculous, man. Everybody saw the red flags as soon as he showed up on the scene and it's like he's got this veil over Diego that Diego and only Diego doesn't see what's happening. It's wild. It's really wild. Um, that, like you said, all those videos that that popped up, you know, in the fight broadcast meeting, him just busting in there like that, and then slowly backtracking as Paul Felder was like, "Dude, what the f are you talking about?" Like. <laughs> You know, he came in at a 10 and then Paul Felder checked him and then he slowly backed it down to a three. <laughs> that was pretty hilarious to me. But uh, it's it's all awkward and it's all really unfortunate, man, because you hate to see it happen to a guy that is has largely been a fan favorite his entire career in Diego. But like I said, the longer he stuck around, the more unceremonious his exit was going to be. I didn't see this particular <laughs> exit over medical records concerns in the UFC being like, whoa, you're concerned about something? We're not putting you in the cage. And just that whole back and forth, like you said on that phone call, was just super weird too. All of this is so strange. All of this is so strange. I, I it's it's amazing to me that Diego doesn't see what's happening with with what Joshua fabi has been doing in handling his career for the past couple of years. Yeah, you've got you got a guy that uh, thinks that good training is to bring a knife into the octagon and kind of like chase fighters with it, <laughs> like an actual knife, not a not a fake knife, not a even if it were, fake knife is still what are you doing? But no, just a straight up knife uh, to chase chase fighters around with. Um, it, it's it's mind blowing, and it's sad to see because. You know, Diego hasn't looked great in his last several fights. He has gotten some wins, which has been fantastic to see, right? You've had you've had Mickey Gall and Craig White back in 2019. Um, even the Chiesa fight, he didn't take a terrible amount of damage. But especially, you know, the past couple of years in general, he's taken a lot of big shots. 
he's he's gotten TKO'd a lot. He, he's taken a lot of hits to the head, and he definitely has not seemed, you know, he he was always a strange guy, as you mentioned, but he seemed more and more erratic as these past couple of years have gone on. And yeah, Joshua Fabia, I'm sure, plays a huge part in that because you've got Sugar Rashad Evans reaching out to Diego and saying, man, I love you. I've, you know, we've trained together. You're the original tough one winner. What are you doing? Like, stop this. And he's just not listening to anybody that's concerned about him. Even in that that uh, broadcast meeting, right? Megan O'Leary went on a great rant against F- <laughs> Joshua. Be like, what are you doing? Like, he is he, a legend, all this stuff, and, and gave him his props and tried to, you know, point to Diego like, Dude, get this guy out of here. You're you're better than this. And Diego just sat there and didn't do anything. It's it's a very weird situation. As you mentioned, this was always going to be Diego's exit from the UFC. I, I did not picture this either. And this is this is a particularly chaotic way to do that. And the other amazing thing is you also brought up that he got paid his show and win money and sponsorship money to be let go of his contract, which is what Leslie Smith filed a complaint with the NLRB for. So that could end up coming around against the UFC for them to do that, uh, which is, you know, also just another strange caveat to the situation. So I am, for one, am glad Diego is not fighting based on his behavior, based on, on some of the things he's done on social media. You know, he's not quite, doesn't seem to quite be himself. It seemed that way for a little while. So I am happy he's not stepping back into the cage. I don't like that this is how it happened, but... And, and you know, I say that. I say he's not stepping back into the cage, but he's not stepping back into the cage of the UFC. He did say on Instagram, I'm free at last, free at last, and then tag Bellator, one, PFL, all that. Do you think one of the other promotions ends up signing him? I would think that a lot of promotions are going to knock on the door and see what's going on. But I think that they should also take extra special caution because of the medical records issue thing. Like thoroughly vet him. And yes, he passed all of his medicals for this fight in particular. But what is what is the concern there? I mean, is is it CTE? Because I've I've long said that (laughs) I've said this many years ago. I forget on which video, but I know I said it on some video content. I was like. Diego Sanchez is going to be the guy we point to in about 20 years. And we'll be like, wow, that's that's the effects of MMA we got to look out for. Um, I I don't know, man. I, I, I Part of me wants to say I hope it's not BKFC that signs him, but part of me hopes that it is because you're going to take the least damage. You're going to take the more, most scar tissue damage, but you're going to take the least head trauma overall in BKFC. It's yeah. the safest. It's the safest out of all of them, oh, unfortunately. Yeah. And and they are, you know, they're setting up that pension plan and everything too. That's yeah. It is the safest. God, <laughs> yeah, yeah. I I kind of now that I'm thinking about it out loud. Yeah, I kind of hope he ends up at BKFC if he's going to end up signing anywhere because it is the safest for him and he'll at least get some retirement or pension plan, providing that you know. Um, Dave Feldman does set that up, which I believe he that's been in the works now for a little bit. Should be details on that are supposed to be forthcoming. So I, I do trust him to do that. So, yeah, that, that makes sense, because as you mentioned, it, when you're asking about medical records, even if you pass medicals for a fight, that's that's a red flag and could easily be CTE. I think there are a couple fighters right now or or retired fighters that we could easily point to and say, yeah, they've got signs or symptoms. Um you know, there's one mayor pro tem of a certain county that I can think of off the top of my head that probably based on some of the videos and things he said, uh, you know, but again, it's it's scary stuff. And Diego has taken so much damage, would not be shocked if that was part of the issue and the concern. <sighs> so we think he's going to get knocks on the door. We're hoping it's BKFC that he gets signed to. I guess the question is, after all of this, after this unceremonious exit from the UFC, after everything that's happened, does it tarnish his legacy? Because he's still going to end up being a UFC Hall of Famer, right? There's there's no way he can't be, I would imagine. 
Right, right. Um, I don't think it tarnishes his legacy. I think his legacy was already set um, 10 years ago. You know, he's kind of like kind of like in that rare air where you, you you hang around like you're a legend of the game, like you're a pioneer in so many aspects. You've been around for so long. Um, and the tail end of your career really doesn't matter what happens. You know, there's a few guys that fall into that category. Anderson Silva, another one that readily comes to mind. I don't think he could do anything at this point that where people are going to like think unfavorably of him. Um, I think most of this is really falling into line to what we kind of expected. If you've been paying attention to his career throughout the case, like I said, a weird guy who's always been unconventional in a lot of ways. And unfortunately this weird guy attaches himself to the other weird guy and we have weird results. <laughs> so it's just a mess. And, um, you know, it results in Diego Sanchez creating an OnlyFans that everyone needs to subscribe to for all of his non-sexual content to where yes. you can get the uh, real story. Um, hashtag the truth of my release. Hashtag this is the real story. Hashtag I will have an indication. Hashtag they are trying to silence me. Hashtag see for yourself on Diego Sanchez's OnlyFans. <sighs> hmm. Yeah, yeah. So yeah, make sure you you hit up that OnlyFans um, and, and let us know if you do. Let us know if you do subscribe to the OnlyFans in the comments because I would I would love to hear from somebody that has subscribed to get get that story. Uh, let us know in the comments how you feel about this entire situation, Diego's career, everything that's happened. Should he have been pulled since he technically passed medicals? Um, should he, you know? go to some place like BKFC. Do you want to see him fight again as a fan? Let us know your thoughts about all of that. Make sure you hit the like button, subscribe, bell notification as well. And uh, I guess final thoughts on this is Diego, retire. Just please, for the love of God, retire. That's, that's all I have to say about it.